Hi, in this video we're going to look at how to jog the robot using the teach pendant. I'm using the virtual teach pendant here inside a robot studio, but the real teach pendant works in almost identical way. First of all, we're going to check that we are in manual mode, and we can look at the top here and see that we are in manual mode. The for the most part the robots in the lab will be locked into manual mode so you cannot run them in auto mode. You can also see on the front panel if we look at the front panel of the controller, we can see that we are in manual mode. You notice as well that this light is flashing, meaning that the power is on to the motors. We are in a guard stop state. So whenever we let go of the enabling button, which is on the right side of the pendant, we can't see it on the, this virtual pendant, but there's a button underneath. We have to hold it in order to move the move the robot. We can simulate that by clicking on the enable button here and notice that we now have a motors on state. This stopped is just telling us that there are no programs running. We have to be in automatic mode and running a program in order for that to change. And also and over here it's telling us we're actually we're going to be working with this particular piece of equipment. So to start jogging, we'll typically go to the jogging menu, so click on the ABB, click on jogging. You can see we have lots of choices here, and you'll learn about those as you start using the robot. So go to the jogging menu. The mechanical unit, we're going to be moving this robot. We don't have any other mechanical units attached. For example, we don't have a linear slide. We don't have a second robot attached to this controller. So we just got one robot, we can, so we can't change this anyways. Absolute accuracy that we don't have. Our motion mode, what are we going to move when we move this joystick over here? So the joystick can move back and forth, up and down, and we can also twist it or rotate it. So that gives us three different axes that we can control. So right now our motion mode says we're in axis one, two, three. We can control axes one, two, three of the robot. We click here, we can select axis four to six. We can also go to linear mode, so X, Y, Z. That's uh, a common one that we'll use, probably the one to use the most. And then reorient, uh, which is another one we use sometimes when we get close. And basically that just keeps the end of the tool in the same position, and lets us rotate the robot around to access the position a little, from a little different direction. So we'll keep it in axis one to three for now, and we'll change it later as we start jogging. Tool, work object, payload. We're not gonna worry too much about right now. We'll learn about those as we go. Joystick lock. We can lock different directions. So if your joystick's not working, you might wanna just double check that someone hasn't locked it out on you. You might wanna do this, for example, if you're in a really tight area, you're trying to jog, and you know that if you bump the joystick to the, to the left, then the robot's going to crash into something very delicate and you're going to do some damage. So you can lock that direction out. And increment mode just tells you how far the robot moves for each click or each push of the joystick button. None we'll see, we'll use quite often for, especially for roughly positioning the robot. And uh, then the, the distance that we move the joystick over controls the speed at which the robot moves in jog mode. And we'll see what happens when we change those later. So let's go move this robot around. We can see as well our position is shown here. We're in degrees because we're going to be jogging the axes. And we can change the position format as well. We can show radians and other things. So let's go. So axis 1 should be left and right or horizontal. And there we go. And we can see the, the position display changing and we can see that the waist or axis one is moving. Pretty simple. Axis two, axis three, the elbow joint. And if we switch here to axis four to six, click OK. And we have axis four is left and right. So that's that twist. Axis five, tilt or pitch that up and down. 
And finally, axis 6, which is the rotation of the end. You can see the tool axis moving around as we move that. And on the real joystick, if you just flick the joystick over, the robot will move a, a little bit. If you hold it in the robot, like this, starts to move. And then it moves at a constant speed. And like I said, if you don't move the robot, or if you move the joystick uh, just a little bit, it'll move at a really slow speed. OK, we've got axis 4 to 6. And we can also go to linear mode. Like I said, this one we'll use quite a bit. And X is this way. And this is set up so if you stand in front of the robot, and this is a good error message to get here, I'll explain for in a second. If you stand in front of the robot with the teach pendant, then this should move the robot towards and away from you, and then side to side. Now we just got a message close to singularity. You'll see that a bit when you're moving the robot around in linear mode. Uh, that usually happens when some of the axes are lined up and either the robot has to move an axis rapidly in order to maintain the tool orientation while it's moving through a point or there's multiple axes that can make the same motion and the robot's uncertain which one to select. So we can acknowledge that and to get out of that typically what we want to do is we want to go back to axis motion and typically if we go to axis 4, 6 and just move axis 4 and 5 a little bit we can sometimes get out of that error. Usually what happens is if this axis is lined up perfectly in line with that one then uh, we say we lose a degree of freedom, we're close to a redundancy, and we'll be talking about that in the class. So go back to linear, give it a try again, and there we go. And you can see what the robot's doing now, it's moving all the joints as required to maintain the orientation of the tool and move linearly. In this case, if we look here, we're moving in the coordinate system base which is essentially the same as world in our case because we only have one robot. We can also select a tool coordinate system or a work object coordinate system and we'll learn about those later. Work object, for example, if we're going to be, say, welding on, on an object, we can set up a work object on that object and then as we move linearly, it'll be moving in the XYZ axis of the object we're welding rather than the world XYZ axis, which can be quite different. So we can select base or world, should do the same thing here. And we'll move in Y. And if I move too far, position outside of reach, it'll tell you which axis caused the problem. And typically all you want to do is jog the other way. There we go. And for Z, up and down by twisting the joystick. And to remember which way the the axis will move, you can think of either screwing in a screw or a bolt or screwing on or unscrewing a, a lid off a jar. So if we twist counterclockwise, the jar lid comes up. If we twist clockwise, we're screwing the jar lid on, it goes down. And of course we're in the virtual environment here, so we yes, we can crash through the floor with no harm done. Okay, and we'll go back up. Another a very useful command when you're pushing the robot, you often want to align the tool with your work. So there's this align option here, or align command. We can select whether we want to align it with the world coordinate system or we might want to align it with a work object. In this case we don't have a work object, we're just going to align it with the world. Just hold down start align and the robot will reorient all the axes. So the tool axis now is straight up and down in the world coordinate system. And it might be hard to tell that from there. We'll jog it around a little bit in XYZ and maybe you'll see that 
it is indeed straight up and down. Okay, unscrew the lid, moves it up. There we go. So that was linear. What we're going to do now is look at changing the speed. So I can go to a different anchor and let's say medium, click OK. And every time I push the joystick to the right, for example, the right should give us a Y direction. So let's watch the Y readout here. Every time I push the joystick to the right, okay, I move, it looks like it's 0.2 millimeters. If I go to large, so we'll go. Looks like it's about one millimeter. It's probably exactly one millimeter. It's just, it's hard to get the exact uh, click correct here. So it probably is one millimeter. Uh, 0.1 millimeters, I think maybe uh, 0.01 millimeters. So none is what we'll typically use. So then if we hold the joystick down, then it moves it constant velocity across there. Use to quickly position it. All right, let's look at a few other things here. We've got all these keys on the right side. What do they do? Well, we can reprogram these keys. They don't do anything right now. Typically, we'll program to them to turn on or off on an input or output. And we can often use that, for example, say we'll program this key to close the gripper and program this key to open the gripper. This key, if I click it, or button, notice what's happening over here. Look on the left side, the motion mode is changing between reorient and linear mode. Also, if you look down here, you'll see we're in linear mode now and reorient mode. If I click on this button, we go to axis mode, one to three, and four to six. So once I get used to these buttons, I don't really have to return to this jogging menu to uh, change my motion mode. Also our increment, so we can see down here where this is a large increment, it's the last ones I used. It goes between none and the last one I used, so which was large. You can see it changing here. Also, we don't even have to have this screen open in order to move the robot around. So that's really handy when, for example, we're in the middle of programming, we've got a program up and we just want to jog the robot. No matter what screen you're in, you can always go in jog mode, look down here what you're moving. So I want to do, let's say, linear. And I'm going to go to none increment. I want to move it. And we can jog the robot around without having to go back to the jogging menu. Okay, so that concludes our how to jog with the, the robot. And you probably want to check out some of the other videos on, for example, how to write a simple program using the Teach Pennant and the other videos that are available.